looks like everything's working. Let's adjust the microphone a little bit. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one. Testing. 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 Ah, oh, that's fine. Good evening. So, Mike at Novel Keys sent me a few samples of his new switch. The creams. I'm sure you've all heard of them. They're his new switch that he's made in conjunction with Kale, Kaihu Kale. The thing that's different about these switches is that the entire housing, in addition to the stem, is all made out of Palm, or in this case, DuPont brand Delrin, which is the real stuff, the real trademarked stuff. Now this isn't your, you know, rinky-dink old rip off acetyl polyoxymethylate or whatever it's called this is actual name brand Delrin and these switches feel really interesting right away when you feel them the plastic something just feels different and they sound different too if I had to say the first Thing that I notice is how loud they are louder than usual so that could be a good thing or a bad thing but I guess it depends on what you're looking for in my case for a linear switch I kind of think it's a good thing so here they are they look pretty I'm gonna take one apart and see what's going on inside of it kind of get an idea for what Mike has done here See, I'm not sure if these are the revised ones or if these are the first samples that he got because he had some changes he wanted them to make. So first thing I want to know is if these have the changes or if these are just the first version. I'm still, still kind of getting the hang of this streaming situation. And I think the black with the white switches is too much contrast. So let's see. I have a I have a an idea for that here. I have a little work mat I think I'll pull out. Let's see if this works any better. This is a silicone work mat. Now the nice thing about this as well is if I solder on it, it's uh, highly heat resistant, so you can handle solder heat, solder temperatures without getting ruined. So that's a little bit better, I think. I'll just get one of them apart and see what's inside. Let's get real close. Hmm. It looks to me like I think there was a piece inside the housing opposite of the leaf that he had them remove so that more different kinds of stems would be compatible it looks like these have that piece removed I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the uh, microscope to more easily look at this the camera's good but the microscope's better at this task really getting an up close view let's see what we got here Here's your palm housing. I'm curious if they if the rails 
are a simplified rail or if they have the indentation okay it looks like it's a looks like what we see here is a simplified rail such as is used in Gretek switches and uh, I've heard that also vintage cherry switches use this type of a side rail and this is characterized by if you look at the, at the uh, cross section of the rail it uh, basically shaped like a bracket like a it has three sides pretty much three different faces that can touch the stem it doesn't have an extra recess in the middle now some switches such as newer cherry switches Gateron switches will have an additional recessed area here and I think the attention of having that I think the intention there is that it lines up with where the seam is on the stem so that the seam of the stem doesn't actually end up contacting the housing because the seam is thought to be a possible source of scratch as for the leaf it's looking like a pretty standard kale leaf to me looks about like the kind of a bump profile that they're using in their other switches like their pro series I don't see anything unusual there typical kind of a cross contact type of a deal here on the contacts yeah this is all pretty standard let's see the way that the top keeps the leaf parts in doesn't seem to have changed here let's check this part this part also doesn't seem to have changed okay so I think the compatibility from what I can tell the compatibility of which bottoms these tops will fit on and which tops will fit on these bottoms should still be according to the spreadsheet that I made doesn't look like there would be any changes to that based on what I'm looking at here uh, let me look at the center center post hole it doesn't seem like we quite get enough light in there to be able to see down inside that hole very well what I'm looking for is rings or ridges doesn't really look ringy or rough it looks pretty smooth but rather than rely on looks something I can do is I can just uh, can use my sharp tweezers as kind of like a feeler I can just feel along the inside wall because this the inside of this wall is a common source of scratch for a lot of switches I want to feel and see if I feel any roughness. No, it feels pretty smooth to me. There is a little bit of roughness very close to the bottom. So, near the bottom there's a touch more roughness. I've seen that on almost every switch that I've looked at where, where it's smoother near the top of this tube, near the entrance of this tube and then there's an area that's rougher near the bottom seems to be really common I'm not sure why probably something to do with manufacturing so take a look at the stem now did they make any changes to the stem since the first revision it looks like it has the signature longer center post that many kale stems have I can confirm that in just a moment here. I believe I have a kale burgundy stem here that I can use as a reference. So let's look at that.
this is interesting. Hmm. It isn't. If I'm seeing this right, it isn't as long. Let me just double check that. And get these at the same angle as each other. Same orientation. Get it all lined up as best I can. Okay, let me take a look. I wonder if he had complaints about the travel distance being reduced or something because it looks to me like the center stem post might eh, it's just I think a touch shorter on the cream Grab my calipers. Now I notice both of them have the beveled edge on the, the side sliders that slide in the housing. That I think tends to reduce scratch. I like that. I'm glad it included that. As expected, since it's a kale stem, it's made by kale, you wouldn't expect them to change that. Okay, so lengthwise, if I look at this, if I measure the entire length of the kale burgundy stem, get it as straight as I can. Yeah, you're looking at maybe that's inches. Let me go to millimeters. A little over 13 and a half, 13.58 millimeters. Let's check the cream now. Definitely shorter. About a quarter of a millimeter shorter. Interesting. That's a small difference, uh, but it is a difference. So that might affect the bottom out a little bit. All right. What else? What else? Let's take a look at the tops. Anything interesting here going on? Anything of note? Tops appear to have a pretty standard design. One thing that seems like a bit of a departure here is if you notice the rails in the top that, that drag against the stem, they're flatter. They're not as rounded, so they look like they would put more surface area in contact with the stem on the top and bottom rails. Now the side rails are rounded like you would see on a cherry housing. So those are pretty standard. I find it interesting that they, they went with a little different shape on the top and bottom rails. Let's see if it actually makes any noticeable difference. Um, other than that, it looks pretty good. Got a nice big LED slot which should accommodate all different configurations of LED pins. Let me look again at that housing. Hmm. So it looks like we have the thicker part of the leaf, the stationary part that doesn't move, is kept in by this little guy here. which looks like it sits slightly above the plastic next to it. So I would expect to see a small indentation there in the in the uh, underside of the top to accommodate that. Yeah, we see it. 
Hmm. Very small though. It's this. It's, I think it's this marsh. Oh, hang on. We have this here. Hmm. That'd be the front. So. corner here okay there is a tiny uh, that where that two is is probably about where that leaf contacts and then the the tactile leaf tactile leaf sits uh, the back part of the leaf sits just a touch above the plastic around it just peeks up a little right there. So that's similar to some other housings that we work with. I think if I had to say the housing that it looks the most similar to in my collection might be the Utemu housing. Yeah, let's let's see here. Well, no. But the Utemu has the more complex rails. Utemu has the the rails that have the extra indentation, the extra channel. Let's see here. Other than that, very similar designs. Okay, maybe not as similar as I thought at first. You see a lot of similarities though with switch manufacturers, so it almost makes you wonder if, if sometimes you have a sharing of molds between different manufacturers. So let me, let me grab another switch here that I have a hunch it looked more like this one, if I remember correctly. Here's a housing that this reminds me of. Hmm, still different though, isn't it? This one's a little closer. Close but no cigar. So you see in this case, hmm. it's closer. But still different. Okay, let's check another one. You know, I think I know what it's gonna end up looking like. I don't want to give it away. Spoilers. What will be the closest design? It's not Greetech, so I'll get that one out of the way. It's not Cherry. It's not probably any of the ones you think. Well, actually, is it Gre? Hmm. Okay, well, there is some similarity to Greetech. This Greetech is missing the tactile leaf. This Greetech housing is missing the tactile leaf. little similar but not, not enough and in the and in the Greetech housing the leaf sits lower it doesn't sit up it doesn't the back side of the leaf doesn't come all the way up to the top of the of the uh, lower housing like this one that's not what I was looking for I was looking for something else where is it okay here's what I was looking for Let's see if it looks like this one, maybe. Hmm. Hmm, not too close. 
There's some similarities once again. But uh, not super close, no. It is kind of close. At least it's as close as any of the other ones we looked at. Except this one does have the extra channel to avoid rubbing against the seam of the stem. In case you hadn't guessed, this housing on the screen right now is a panda housing. So, one thing you notice pretty much any any time you look at panda housings next to anything else is the uh, the leaf bump is huge. Let's see if I can get a good angle here. The leaf just sticks way out there. Big old leaf. So much bigger, it's just embarrassing to these other switches. Anyway, you get the idea. Panda. Panda leaf is long. Long, long leaf right there so TTC Panda Temu all three of these housings uh, I didn't show it but Switchmaster as well they all show a, a similarity here and I suspect uh, that because of that the tops and bottoms probably are compatible let's just check here got me a you know, panda top. If it'll focus. Come on, you can do it. Hmm. Yeah, too hard. I'll just go back to the uh, microscope. So here's a panda leaf and a cream lower housing. Okay. That fits just barely. It's a tight fit, but it's but it's on there. So you can use a cream top. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. You can use a panda top on a cream bottom. I have no idea why you would ever want to do this. This is like the opposite of what you would want to do. What I think you might want to do is this. Let's see if this works. Let's take a cream top and a panda bottom. That's what I want to know. Because, you know, this can. Yeah. Okay, I can make that. I can make that smaller. You mean like crop it? Shows a lot of my room in the background, doesn't it? <laughs> Nobody needs to see that. So what I'm curious here is I've I've said recently, these days I've been saying I don't I don't actually believe that panda tops are, are really made of palm. But I'm still waiting to hear back from Zisp Zisp however you say his name guy who designed them uh, on to confirm whether they have any palm in them at all <laughs> the tops that is but I don't think the tops have are made of palm unless they're a palm blended with something else but uh, what I was curious about is whether I could put a cream top onto a panned bottom and then interestingly it almost fits but it's not quite there it's binding a little bit let me, uh, let me try what Brian's suggesting here. It says holding alt. I'm going to try what Brian's suggesting. So first of all, ah, way too big. So even if I go like this, he says 
I can hold Alt. Hmm. Yeah. Awesome. I'm cropping it. What a great. Look at that. Yeah, that's better, isn't it? Pretty cool. I'm a red tiny now. Yeah, that's cool. Very cool. Thank you for the tip. It's very helpful. Hmm. You can hold your mouse. Hmm. So Alt, I guess, is the universal cropping mode modifier, it seems like. If I want to crop things. So I'm kind of interested in using panda tops on cream bottoms. And I'm seeing here that they don't quite fit. I mean, sorry, cream tops on panda bottoms. Cream tops, panda bottoms. Um, holy pandas already sound great, in my opinion, but I wondered if they could sound even better with cream tops. So I'm just looking here, trying to see if, it, if, if it's obvious why they don't fit. And, I think I can see why. I think I see what's uh, keeping it from fitting. I think it's this little ridge right here. There's a little, little ridge right here. I think if I trim that, I think if I trim this little guy off, let me grab my flush cutters and give it a shot. They say you can't improve upon perfection. Pandas. Pandas are pretty great. But one of the reasons people claim that they're great is because they have palm tops. Now, if they don't really have palm tops, it kind of begs the question, is that because it's good that they don't have palm tops and we should leave it? Or would they be even better if they actually had palm tops? So that's why I want to make at least at least one of these switches to where it'll fit. Let's go back to the main camera for a minute here. I guess I have to I guess I have to do the crop on each instance of my camera. Doesn't apply across all my different. Hmm. Anyways, so I'm going to trim off this little ridge here. Seeing as how it's palm, it's very easy to trim with a razor blade. And then, you know, if you get tired of the keyboard life, but, uh, Razor blades are handy for so many things. All right. So in a step that takes about two seconds to do, you can make the cream top fit on the pan and bottom, should you so desire to. Just make sure that all, all the legs are clipped in all the way. I think they are, but <laughs> yeah. It's kinda nice. I might want to try I might want to just save my panda tops, just set them aside, and uh put cream tops on my holy pandas and see how they sound. Huh, that's kind of cool. Because you know, if you've experimented, you probably know that the top can make a big difference in sound. It's not just the bottom. So this is the panda. It has an alias stem in it right now.
You know, here's what I should do. I should do a side by side. Take this modified cream top. Oops, I have Twitch chat hidden. Don't want to do that. There. I'm gonna be able to see what Brian's saying. There we go. Just put that little guy back together. Be right back. In case you're wondering what I'm doing, over here is a large bin. Full of switches. Bags and bags of switches. Sometimes it can be hard to find things in here. I think I want to change it a little bit. Use drawers or something where I can see it easier. But somewhere, somewhere in these bags and bags of switches is a box with something special in it. box oh, just a little piece of meme switch history my holy pandas are in here so I'll grab a couple here I want to see how the palm top sounds on there. Let's get this mic closer. Those sound pretty cool. I always liked how holy pandas sound. Now, how do they sound with the cream top? That's what I want to know. Because you know I'm all into Franken switches. Okay, so that's a panda bottom. Cream top, halo stem. Ooh. Let me see something here. Let me see how the wobble compares. Okay, the cream tops are a little looser fit than the panda tops, it looks like.
Oh, that's interesting. Kind of sounds like the low end or the uh, bottom out noise sounds a little bit lower, but the top out noise sounds a little bit higher to me. Interesting. What about this though? Now I know this is not going to be as tactile, obviously, but what if you do a little, uh, like I think Zambuman did this. Did a batch of these. What if you just uh, put the halo stem in your cream housing? You got the all palm switch with the halo stem. Let's see what that sounds like. Well, that's interesting. They actually sound more muted to me than the panda housing. Panda housing sounds louder to me. Hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting stuff. will not be replacing my holy panda tops with cream tops based on this experiment but I do want to build a keyboard with just stock cream switches that's what I would like to do I think it'll have an interesting sound seems to me like the cream housing you know it's hard to tell in just a switch tester like this, obviously, how it's going to sound. But it seems like the cream housing is a little more muted. Like the sound is kind of flatter. Not as, uh, I don't know, not as hollow sound. Holy pandas sound really kind of hollow. I don't know how else to put it. And I think that's part of their appeal that people like there. They're a loud switch, I gotta say. So anyways, that's as much as I want to tamper with my holy pandas right now. I'm saving those for a special build. <laughs> They're a bit rare these days. But as for the cream switch, let me see how it feels here. Let's see if I can kind of get an idea of smoothness next to some of my other switches here. This, this one's a linear, so that's a good comparison. So this right next to it is a Revo White, which is a Milky Gateron switch. Bottom out. Visually, it looks about the same. It might be off by a fraction of a millimeter. Hmm. I'm feeling this. I'm feeling the sticking sensation that people have described, which is interesting. I get some of that even in my Milky Gateron housing, though. It's different, though. But I only feel it for off-center key presses. 
on center key presses feel great. I mean, why wouldn't they? I definitely like the sound of the cream better than the milk you get around. They sound creepy. Creepy. Well, let me see here. some lube. Well, that microphone's way too close. There we go. So when I was recording those switch sounds, get that center post hole, not too much. A little bit on the leaves. Touch up the rails. Make sure it's not too thick there. stem so it's not going to be as easy to tell how much is on there done. I've heard people say that they didn't think that the lube really solved the problem or something like that. So I want to see for myself. It certainly sounds better. Like most switches. Now that we've lubed it, let us compare lubed to unlubed instead of comparing it to a different switch. Okay, well here it is unlubed. Lubed. So the sticking sensation is enough that I think you might be able to actually hear it. So let me get the microphone down here, see if you can actually hear it, but if you can hear what's happening. Turn the gain all the way up, put it right next to the switch. And when I push it, right at the edge. Maybe you'll hear what I mean. It's 
Is this getting stuck, kind of? Now this is the unlubricated switch. The issue is not as pronounced on the lubricated switch. But it's still there. So I wonder if a different type of lube then we're used to using could possibly help with this issue. So let me pull out a different lube I have. I'm going to mark this switch that I've lubed already so that I don't get it mixed up with other switches. Alright, that one's marked. Let's try another experiment here. Come on, focus. That's better. <laughs> Doesn't like to focus on this distance, does it? Maybe I should be using manual focus, or maybe I need more lighting, better lighting. Anyway, that looks okay. Do the stem. Enough, I think.
Looks like we have any better luck with this grease than the other. No. <laughs> Didn't help. Alright. It's not any better than the other grease. The, the issue that I'm feeling is still there. So, get rid of this. Uh, I don't think I need to mark this one. Yeah, I don't think I need to mark this one because you can see the the grease is black. So that's pretty easy to tell. Something different going on. Alright, well let's try something else. Um, how about Super Lube? Super Lube doesn't work the best on nylon housings, we've found. I think most of the community has figured that out. However, this is a whole different game. Now we're talking about a palm housing. We don't know how super glue will perform on a palm housing. So I have here some super glued, the super glued. <laughs> I have here some super glued grade double zero, which is pretty rare. But it's nice and it's easier to work with. It's not as thick as the regular stuff, which is like NLGI grade two. This is grade zero zero, so it's even thicker than than other grade like. You've heard of like 205G0, for example. This is thinner than that. This is a grade double zero. It's twice as zero as the other zero. So, let's just see. See if it works well at all. I don't know what's going to happen. I haven't used this loom on any switches yet, to be honest. Because I just haven't had great results with Super Lube in general. It's not that, not that I've had bad results with it, just that there are other lubes that work better, like the Miller Stevenson's products, like Trubosis 3204, and also with 205G0 and Crytox products in general, they all seem to work better than Superlube for nylon switch housings. So the reason I want to double check here is because now we're not dealing with the nylon switch housing, are we? Now yeah, we're dealing with palm on palm. It's, a, it's possible that we may get different results. I don't want to. I'm not going to guarantee anything, but we'll see. We'll find out very soon. Because I don't actually know what synthetic lubricant Super Lube uses as a base. Know that they have some kind of base of some kind of synthetic oil and they thicken it with PTFE powder. So that's common. But in the case of Crytox, Turbosis 3204, and other similar products, the base is PFPE oil and the thickener is PTFE. And then there are other chemicals such as binders to help it stay fresh or whatever. <laughs> I think the binders are like to keep the PTFE mixed thoroughly in there or something like that, I don't know. But this, Super Lube, has PTFE dust in it, but we don't know what the base oil is that's being thickened by the PTFE. So anyway, let's just see. Let's just give it a shot. This is the unlubed one. Once again. getting stuck. Hmm. The stickiness is still there. Hmm. Hmm. 
Where is this coming from anyway? I wonder if most of this sticking sensation is mainly coming from the switch top or, or the switch lower housing. Let me do this. Take Need to label this again. Okay. Label that one. Set it aside. Now let me get this. This one that I greased up with some grease that normally works well for me. And let me try a different top on it. One that is not. You know, let me try Panda Top, because I know that one fits and it doesn't doesn't feel like it's sticking much, if at all, maybe not even at all. All right, cream switch with panda top. interesting. The sticking sensation is all but all but eliminated. Hmm. So different top gets rid of the sticking sensation how does it sound <laughs> sounds cool um, sounds real cool This top. It's like a black cherry like top. Let's see, do I have an actual cherry top in here? Oh no, that's right, cherry tops won't fit on here. Uh, but this one will. Let's see. So there might be a little something wrong with these, uh, there might be an issue with these uh, cream tops. I'm not sure if it's the material or if there's another explanation. 
Hmm. Do they feel smooth? I mean, they do. Let me try a different top here, though, just for fun. So here's a cream switch with the Switchmaster top on it. I feel great. I'm kind of skeptical of those tops though. Let me see if I have a, a good top here. Something trustworthy. No, not a razor top. Let's see. What else do I got? What's this? Gateron. Clipped Gateron top. Okay, so. Sounds good though. The sound of it's pretty cool. The sound of the cream switch with the the black switch master top. I need to find a cherry top. Here's a I found a cherry top. We'll give this a try. Now, if you didn't read my Compatibility, my switch top compatibility spreadsheet. In order to use cherry tops on a cream switches, you're gonna have to cut these little teeth off. These little teeth have to be cut off from the cherry top. Then you can use it on a cream switch. It will fit just fine. Okay. Throw this. No, it didn't feel right. I forget. You know, I haven't looked at my spreadsheet lately. I'm not sure that a cherry top actually will fit, even with the clipped. Ah, oh, you know what? I forgot. It doesn't fit. There's another problem. There's another reason why it doesn't fit. Yeah, that's not gonna fit. I don't know what I was thinking. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, you can't put you can't put uh, gather on top. You can't put cherry top on. What you can put on is a TTC top. That might sound good. Um, it might sound okay. TTC tops are kind of a quirky sound in my opinion. But I like I like TTC. Uh, TTC black switches in general, and this is a TTC black switch top. So, let's see what, see what we get here. Let's put the TTC black switch top on here. Come on, focus, you dumb camera. Oh, hopefully, you're going to be using a better camera soon. I got something planned. That feels real smooth. That feels pretty smooth to me. How's that sound compared to another lubed cream? Here's another lubed cream.
Oh, that sounds crazy. Yeah, it's definitely louder with the TTC top. I'm not sure if I like it better. Or I think it sounds worse. Yeah. Hmm. So let's see here. How about a different? Let's see here. Let's think. What other lubes? What other type of lube can we try? Maybe something silicone based. Those aren't often used probably because they don't work very well most of the time in switches in my experience they in my experience the silicone based lubes usually don't work well in switches um, but let's try it um, that might be something to do with the nylon so we're not dealing with nylon here so maybe it'll be different let me grab some here Mm. Okay, so cool lube applied. No, it didn't solve the sticking problem. Hmm. Very interesting. still there. Let me see what else I have in my collection.
do have another idea to try. I wonder if the addition of some PTFE powder would help. Either to a dry switch or to a. Come on. Why is it not focusing? This camera, I swear. Does it forget how to focus, camera? Alright. <laughs> so, let me just try something real quick. A little uh, extra PTFE powder, see if it makes a difference. this stuff. So I'm just gonna go nuts here. I'm just gonna do something crazy. I'm just gonna kinda don't get in there and shake it off. Oh, I got some powder on there. Probably way too much, but uh, now Ooh. It's like it's like powdered sugar. Sheesh. Not super easy to work with, is it? Hmm. Interesting. I don't know how one should work with this stuff, but I'm just going to try, try one other thing here. I'm going to take a pinch and just blow it into the housing. maybe try to get in there hmm technique will need some uh, refinement for sure if it even works this is just an experiment See if it even has benefit before doing any anything, any uh, <clears throat> more thorough kind of work on this. Oh. I cannot read the chat. I think that's what he's telling me right now. I'm gonna spam my text. Hmm. Interesting. Pet Rock One. You've really optimized your spamming. Good job. Okay, let's see. Well, that's interesting. The... Which lube is this? <clears throat> the addition of PTFE powder seems to have made it stop sticking. Got rid of the sticking sensation. Am I looking at the right switch here? Yeah. It feels so much different. Holy cow. Hmm. So it would seem that what 
is needed here, maybe just a higher PTFE content for these switches. Interesting. Wow. I'm gonna have to get some. Uh, so there's a super lube that has an increased PTFE content more than what most greases have in them. It's like a they call it like extreme something something extreme pressure and temperature version. But the important thing for us is that it's got more PTFE in it. So wow, this really works. Absolutely smooth. Hmm. I don't feel the sticking at all now. Maybe it just needed more PTFE content. Well, it definitely makes me want to try that stuff again. The uh, extreme variant that has more PTFE in it. Um. Hmm. Mm. That reminds me. So I'm gonna mark this one as the one where I applied the powder. Let me just see how it sounds first, though, before I go on. Sounds good. I think this is the. Uh, eh, what is this? I think this one was super lube, and then I added powder to it. Well, that one feels really good. Um. So I do have another grease. Let's see here. That I can try. That is thicker. And because it's thicker, I actually have a couple more greases I can try. I also have 205G0, but I thought someone already tried 205G0, so I'm not sure how necessary that is. Let's, let's try it anyway, just, just in case, in case it hasn't been tried. Oh, and I have some Crytox 207. So let's, let's figure this out here. Let's, let's see what works best. I also have some Finish Line Extreme Fluoro. That's supposed to have a lot of PTFE in it. There's the 205G0. for one last thing. Just looking for the 207. Where did I leave it? Talks 207. Okay. Let's see which one feels the smoothest. 207, 205G0, finish line, and Chinese stuff. Okay.
Alright. I think the first one I'll try is the one that I th think is probably least likely to produce a good result. And that will be the thick Chinese grease. I mean, it might, but I'm not, I'm not expecting too much on this stuff. It is very thick, so we'll see what happens. Wow, that's thick. It's very thick, which might mean that it has a lot of PTFE in it. I don't know. But I'm going to give it a shot. Alright, there's the Chinese stuff. Clean my brush here. Now, finish line. This stuff seems to contain a lot of PTFE, as far as I can tell. You know, and if this helps, if this stuff works well, it might be something we could mix with another lube. Because this stuff seems like it kind of dries out sometimes. So, maybe if this stuff works well, maybe it's something we could mix together with another lube that doesn't dry out. Sometimes I see this stuff kind of seem like it dries out and gets flaky, which is not cool. I think for that reason, I was making a mess. I think that's why Nathan Kim, for example, stopped using it. He used to be a big proponent of it, and you don't see him using it anymore. Next, let me get some of that 205 to zero. I'm not really expecting to see a great result from this because I think I read a review by Krellbit already where he tried this stuff. Pretty sure he tried 205G0. 
on the creams and seems like he wasn't satisfied so if it, if it worked really well well I don't know maybe he maybe he was I I didn't quite get his point I don't remember exactly what he said it was like it was either that it didn't satisfactorily make them smooth or else it might have just been that it uh, did make them smooth but he didn't think it was worth having to cover it up with lube or something like that I don't know but we'll see what we'll see what results we get here best thing is just to try for yourself because you know what they say your mileage may vary Last but not least, very thick, very sticky Crytox 207. stuff. Yeah. Good. Let's work that lube in a little bit. Okay, 
So from right to left, the first one is unlubed. It's also the loudest, of course. Next, this is the Chinesium lube. Very quiet. Next one's the finish line. Then comes 205G0. Sounds a lot like the Chinese lube. Maybe even a little better. And then last is 207. Okay, so the first one. That's the sound of the friction that we're trying to get rid of. That's the unlubed switch. Okay, first one, Chinese grease. Uh -uh. Friction's still there. Second one, finish line. Still feels like it's binding. Third one, 205G0. Mm -mm. Still feels like it's binding. 207. Still still getting that binding sensation. So, I think the only one where I didn't feel the binding sensation was the one where I added PTFE powder. Let me see if I can find which one that is. It's one of these two. Let's see if I can figure out which one it is. Because I just want to double check and make sure that I'm not going crazy here. Because it, it really did feel a lot different to me at the time. Let me just make sure. Hmm. Well, it's different. I think I was over the optimistic. It is still able to have a binding sensation a little bit. But it's harder to get it to do it. Let's go. F this one's the worst. PTFE powder one is noticeably smoother than the rest of them for off center key presses. Two hundred five G zero seems to be the second best. Well, wait a minute. Two hundred five G zero feels second best to me. Second smoothest after the super lube with added PTFE. So, just for fun, just for funsies, let's open up the 205G0 and put some extra PTFE dust on the stem. I don't know if this is really a practical technique for us to use, but it just kind of proves the point that adding more PTFE may or may not solve this issue. That's what we're trying to determine here. 
So, just uh, it's all caked on there. So I need to just kind of brush the excess off. I'm gonna kind of dab a little bit because I don't want it to. I don't want to sort of scrape off too much. It's kind of making a mess, but that's okay. Yep, it got smoother. Hmm. Got smoother. Doesn't want to get stuck anymore. the other ones do. Mm -hmm. So one last thing I want to know. Can I replicate this result some more methodical way? So, for example, can I take some kind of lube? Just temporarily until somebody, until we find a good product for this. But can I say take, for example, maybe, maybe some of this uh, super lube gunk that I have here because I have a lot of it. Makes for good experimentation fodder. Just glob some. Can I just glob some of this into a vial here? and mix it with some ungodly amount of PTFE to create a grease that has so much PTFE in it that it resolves this issue without having to get dust all over the place. Let me just try that real quick. Camera focus. Okay. I mean, I don't even know how much PTFE I really need in here. I'll just put a lot, a ton. Put a ridiculous amount in there. <sighs> PTFE powder. Virgin PTFE, it says. See if I can get it to mix together with the grease.
see what we got here. That leaves us with a very thick, sticky substance. It should have a lot more PTFE in it. So, let me try sticking that in the switch, see what happens. Got a little bit on my hands. I'm gonna wipe them off real quick with some nice purple. The grease off. Alright. Let's see what we got here. That's funny, there's still a feeling of sticking, which is very slight. Hmm, it's almost like. Hmm, either I didn't put enough PTFE in, or maybe there's too much grease. Maybe when the PTFE is completely mixed in, it doesn't work as well. This is really strange. So, back to where we started. Here's one unmodified. 
the sticking is quite bad. Hmm. Well, for now, it seems to me like the best course of action might just be if you really want to use these switches for the bottom out note or whatever the reason. I mean, they're, they're pretty interesting in that they're all palm. For now, something you could do is you could just use different tops. You could use TTC tops, for example. Kind of seems like a cop out, though. You, know, you can feel it though, the top, you can feel the top binding with the stem. And you can feel that sensation. I wonder if they couldn't, uh, there's something about the design of the top. They couldn't uh, change the blend of the top slightly, maybe. I don't know if they have to use the blend they used. Well, you know, you feel it with the bottom as well, actually. Hmm. Interesting. Let me check something. This is a TTC stem. It's also palm. I just wondered if it would feel the same. And it does. The binding sensation feels about the same. So you know, at this point I'm wondering, <laughs> is dry lube the way to go with these, maybe? The one thing I haven't tried yet is PTFE powder without any grease. Like it's worth a little try. I think. Just get a little, a little residue on here. don't know much about dry lube, you know, how you get it to stay where it belongs and such. If it stays in place or if it migrates or the best way to apply it is. Well, I'll be darned.
So just to recap, this is this one on the end is super lube with additional PTFE powder dusted on. So it's it's almost not sticking. This one is Crytox 207. Sticking pretty bad. This is 205G0. Also, also sticking almost as bad as the 207. This one's a finish line. Sticking bad. This is Chinese grease I bought on Taobao. Sticking pretty bad. And this is a dry PTFE powder. Not sticking. So interesting. Seems like the most effective lubricant on creams is PTFE powder. I'll have to cycle the switch more and see if the lubricant stays in place. See if the effect continues to work after more use. But for now, this one is the only lube I was able to find in my collection that eliminated that uh, two pieces kind of sticking against each other like this. You know what I'm saying? That uh, kind of sticking and then breaking loose again over and over. The only thing I could find that eliminated that was the PTFE powder. Now if you want to try this yourself, this is what I purchased. I bought it on Amazon. So you can probably buy the same thing. Maybe you can find something even better. This is, this is the stuff that's working quite well. So, hope that helps someone. And I'll keep experimenting with these switches and hopefully we can develop a good technique for these because they sound really cool. They just uh, need a little help in the lube department. So hopefully we can figure it out. Thank you for watching, if you did, and have a good night.